Hello, I'm Principal Aaron Gentile, and this is Eagle News. Our feature story this week takes us back into the category of hero teachers. I'm so excited to interview Mrs. LaRue and Mrs. Warbeck who've been nominated as middle school hero teachers. I think they've got some great advice for you students and parents as we continue our e-learning adventure. Let's take it to that interview right now. Good afternoon, Life Christian Academy. I really appreciate uh, you checking in on these Eagle News events. Uh, this is our featured story for the week, and I am delighted to have two hero teachers from the middle school joining us, Mrs. Warbreck and Mrs. LaRue. I'm sure they're cheering for you right now as they're watching Eagle News. You two are fantastic and inspiring. So let's dive into a couple of questions. Uh, about this e-learning season even right now and don't fight over it I'll, I'll let each of you get a chance to respond but but the first question we're going to talk about is what are you doing specifically to support students during this transition to e-learning what's been your biggest success in supporting students well for me personally the biggest success that I've had is in checking in through email and also through side Zoom meetings, in addition to regular Zoom meetings, have some one-on-one -on -one time with some students that are struggling, maybe struggling to organize or, or just get the work done. And we keep it short. They're five, 10, 15 minutes max, but I found that that's very helpful. The one-on-one -on -one contact is really helpful. Yeah, when you remove the structure of a bell schedule for a middle school student, you have to create structure in a different way. So your individual Zoom meetings does that for students. Thanks, Jenny. All right, Mrs. Warbeck, how about you? What's, what's the most successful thing you've done to support students? Um, I would actually say I'm in the same boat as Mrs. LaRue. I do a, a lot of one-on-ones on the back end. If I haven't heard from a student, um, and yes, they're even if they're turning in work, but I haven't actually talked to a student, they haven't shown up to a meeting, I will try and reach out one-on-one -on -one and just say, hey, how's it going? I miss you. Um, because yes, you're turning in work, but yes, I haven't actually seen you. So just connecting with these students um, during this time is huge for me and to know that I care about them, not just their work. That's huge. Yeah, that social emotional support that you're providing is fantastic. And I know um, you, you've created a system for it so it doesn't overwhelm you. Would you share just any teachers that are watching might, might like this? You're using Microsoft Teams, I believe. So what would a simple routine to check in with the student, what would that look like? So yeah, I uh, log into uh, eight or 9 a.m. when our school starts, uh, yeah. I log into Teams and it's just always on. I'm always logged in. Uh, students have know that they can reach out through chat and it will pop up real quick mm -hmm. and I can uh, either get back to them or say, hey, let's do a video chat. Mm -hmm. um, it's my quick way of just saying, hey, I'm thinking about you. Uh, it's, I feel like it's a little more personal than an email because they are used to instant messaging and that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Uh, so I can go through and go, oh, I haven't heard from the student. Hey, how's it going? Good morning. Uh, we missed you today. How are things? Yeah, fantastic. I think that's a great way to do it. It's all through one system. It's coming through and, and you can get quick responses from kids and respond quickly to them. It's engaging in their world with their language. It, Teams is like an instant messaging app. So that's cool. That's really cool. Um, Let's shift the question a little bit about parents. What are you, how are you supporting parents 
who are now trying to become the teacher's assistant at home? <laughs> Always a fun question. But I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Um, I, if I haven't heard from a student, I try and link, I will email uh, the student directly. That's my first go to is email the student directly, but I will usually CC a parent on that email just so that they're aware that I'm trying to contact their student mm -hmm. um, with, hey, this is missing or hey, I haven't seen you or hey, how are things going? Uh, and then also letting the parent know that we are still here to help them. So any, I've had a couple parents reach out, said, my student is overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. And I said, I'm going to get a hold of them. So I hop on Teams or I send a quick email, uh, video chat, whatever with the student mm -hmm. uh, and walk through. I've done lessons with students. I've answered questions with students. I've tried to be that person um, and try to eliminate the parent aspect as far as their, their butting heads with the students yeah, yeah. Um, because it's a forceful do this now why well, can't do this I don't understand it so trying to be that I'm still the teacher so yeah. I'll definitely take that off your plate um, and let me talk to them yeah parents I hope you hear that please reach out to teachers no matter what school your kid is at uh, teachers love students that's why we went into this profession um, so please reach out to the teachers uh, Mrs. LaRue how about you any any tips for parents um, I would say contact the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I have several parents that we email regularly and or have phone conversations regularly because like Ms. Warbrick said, I, I want to take that pressure off of the parent mm -hmm. because the pressures that they are under with having their child at home are new pressures. So anything I can do to support the parent as well as the student um, I have gone through lessons with students. We have reduced the amount of lessons that they've done. Um, I would say that I believe the kids, the students are not reaching out as much as they did when we were in the building. Right. It's, hard. it's harder. And so that's what I'm, I'm trying to support both sides, parent and student by more phone conversations and um, more Zoom meetings. Yeah, thank you for doing that. And you brought up a great point there. You, you said something that it's a, almost a fear for teachers to say, but you said it and I'm pr so proud of you for doing it. You said you'll reduce an assignment or, or move an eliminated assignment because I think the challenge is um, we, we tend to think as educators that work equals learning. Uh, and and the, the switch in uh, mindset that I've been trying to communicate, and I know you're on board with me with this, is um, it's learning equals learning. So how do we focus on learning rather than student work? How, how are you two making learning the greater priority than just uh, the work? I'm trying to use variety. I'm using some videos, um, we, some silly short two or three minute videos to introduce the concept before I actually teach it. Mm -hmm. So it's not the first time that they've seen it. Um, I'm also um, chatting with them about what they need. Okay, guys, what do you need here? How, do you, how can we accomplish this? And I find that a lot of times when you engage the students, like in a Zoom meeting, they will give themselves more work than I would have given them. <laughs> yeah. so, so I let them have more say and more ownership in what they're going to accomplish. That's fantastic. Great advice. How about you, Becca? Um, yeah, that's huge. The feedback, trying to get feedback from students of how is this going? What does this look like for you? What is working? And I have changed a couple of things uh, due to student feedback. So I love hearing how, how it's working for them on their end. But I am, I honestly miss being in the classroom and miss being able to teach. Like, and so most of what I send out are videos of me sitting in my backyard teaching them because I miss it so much. Yeah. But for me, um, what we would have done in the classroom is note taking. Uh, I would teach, they would take notes and I, it wouldn't be a graded thing. However, I am teaching and I'm having them write down some things that they heard me say. I go back and double check. Uh, a, I want to know that they're watching the video, but also I want them to know that they're understanding the material. So it's not just work. Uh, they're listening to me have the conversation with them. 
uh, more so than just uh, here's an assignment, figure it out from the Bible, because there's so much yes. that you need to teach from the Bible. It's not something you can read and just understand. Right. Um, so I, I do a that. lot of videos. No, I love that. Thank you for thank you both of you for uh, joining me today. You truly are hero teacher teachers in my eyes. The work you're doing is heroic. It's amazing. Your support and love for students is so evident. So thank you for joining me. Um, God bless. Make it a great day and go Eagles. Thank you. Bye. 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 And of course, Eagle News wouldn't be complete without good news with Mrs. Warbreck. Take it away, Mrs. Warbreck. Hello, welcome to another episode of Good News with Mrs. Warbreck. I am Mrs. Warbreck here to bring you some good news on this beautiful sunny day. Our first piece of good news comes from our amazing LCA Dreams Auction Committee. They have been able to solidify an online auction that will last a week. This event will take place May 25th to May 30th. So spread the good news, tell your friends that we have an online auction happening very soon. There will also be a live virtual event on May 29th and we would love for everyone to join in. For more information, you can go to the LCA website and click the engage button and there will be information on there for you. All right, our second piece of good news comes from LCA elementary students and their families. LCA will host the first ever, I feel like we're doing a lot of these first evers, virtual talent show featuring performances from LCA's kindergarten through fifth grade students on May 20th. Videos must be submitted by May 14th to be considered for this event. If you want more information, please reach out to your classroom teacher. And our third piece of good news features our amazing, wonderful, fabulous LCA seniors. Principal Kellett writes, had a ton of fun visiting the homes of my Life Christian Academy seniors. A trailblazing class. Congratulations, LCA class of 2020. We are so proud of you. And our last piece of good news features middle school all-star students who are nominated by their teachers for one, being consistent with their e-learning experiences, Number two, supporting peers and teachers with appropriate feedback and communication about how things are going in their world. And three, continuing to produce quality work on time and meet all teacher expectations. Way to go, Tristan, Anna, Tyler, and Jordan. We are so proud of you and congratulations for being our all-star middle school students of the week. If you have good news to share with us, hashtag LCA good news on any social media platform. We will hunt it down. We will find it. And we may even present it here on good news with Mrs. Warbreck. Everyone have a fabulous day. That's all the time that we have for today. I hope you're having a great day. You're staying safe, staying healthy. We're praying for you. Make it a great week and go Eagles.